So imagine 200 units, 12 bands per unit, and then a manual operation with all different size because there's no pan that is the same. Sometimes we have some repetition in, in one size, but most of the times, you know, 196 back pan order could be 196 different bending sequence. So imagine the operator doing this. Hi, this is Rob Coleman, editor of Canadian Fabricating and Welding, and welcome to this episode of Automation Talk, a video series presented by FMA in partnership with Salvini America. Today, we'll be talking to Julien Bergeron, Chief Operating Officer of Cidel AMP, a Beloit, Quebec company specializing in the fabrication of architectural panels, shadow boxes, and back pans. This company's operations have changed dramatically over the past few years, and automation has played a key role in that, which may surprise some given that they're working in the construction industry. After all, every building you build is different. Flexible automation, in this case, Salvanini's S4 plus P4 flexible manufacturing system has really changed the game for CDL. And not just in the cutting and forming of backpans, which was the key first element that they wanted to make with the system. Now, beyond this, the company has been able to develop new products using the system. It's had a chance to take long serving staff and give them new opportunities in the company. And beyond that, simply making their production even more and more efficient. And this continues. But I'll let Julian Bergeron tell you the whole story. Prior to having the S4P4, we were cutting with a laser, uh, the galvanized steel sheets. Then we were breaking the cassettes. Then afterwards, we were taking those parts and, and bringing them to different bending units, depending on the design, because some units can do an overbend, some have some size limitation, uh, the tonnage also is not the same. So basically, we were bringing, I would say, 195 galvanized part cut by laser on a table for a guy to bend four sides. Sometimes, most, most of the times with the design, it's minimum eight bands per back pan. Some of them is 12. So imagine 200 units, 12 bands per unit, and then a manual operation with all different size because there's no pan that is the same. Sometimes we have some repetition in, in, in one size, but most of the times, you know, 196 back pan order could be 196 different bending sequence. So imagine the operator doing this. So, so now the machine, basically what it's helping us to do is, is, uh, is, is cut the material efficiently uh, we don't have to break any cassettes. The parts are going uh, directly through the bending station, which is the P4. And uh, within the scrap, we can use uh, some nesting programs to you know, cut some parts that we're using in most of our production. As, uh, as an example, uh, stiffeners. You know, the machine is, is giving us stiffeners in the scrap, so we're, we have optimization there as well. The, the time, you know, to, to do a single part right now is a minute. As prior, we need to have, you know, a guy bringing the, the, the pallet to the, the bender, explain to the bender when he needed to do all the programmation for his machine and then do the, do the, do the bending sequence. So, so the S4 for us was, was basically, in, well, basically enabled us to, to grow the business in an environment where, where labor is limited. We also needed some experience. So we took one of our decorated veteran uh, in the shop was uh, 20 years experience with the, the, the sheet metal and we brought them to the programmation. So this guy is basically, uh, is programming uh, our, all our three machines. And his production head, his production mindset uh, gives him the edge as per he knows exactly how the bending sequence needs to go. He understands uh, what are the limitation of, of a bending machine because he's bent for over 50, 15 years. So that, that person is really helpful in, in the fact that he helps us preserve the machine and optimize all uh, the programmation on those machines. We took our more savvy people and right now they're used in the production for panels. So, so they're giving us, you know, the yield of these guys are, uh, is greater as if they stayed in the back pants business. Right now we are pushing to, uh, to sell to the industry a two millimeter uh, aluminum panel, a boxed one that could be done uh, exclusively on the S4P4. So we're putting efforts on the sell side of business to, to go to the architects and show them that, that avenue that is economic and for us it's efficient. So currently we're inviting a lot of curtain wall manufacturers to our shop because some of them are using a design that we call it's the MR1. And so basically the way it's done that pan, you need two sides and a bottom. So you need to spot weld, then weld. And on the bending side, it's very, very long. And we're trying to take them to the MR2, 
which is um, which is a, a back pan that is boxed that can be done on the S4P4. So, two uh, two options, two avenues we're using right now is is, is by uh, a price incentive. Obviously, what we can do on the machine, we sell it cheaper because there's less manual operation, and so we're trying to push clients toward that product and also education uh, on on the benefits of, of the other product we can produce using the S4P4. So we're trying to uh, get into a second shift and and eventually a third shift on the on the machine to really uh, maximize the, the, the yield and uh, doing so we're going to need uh, we're going to need to have automation on programmation side and we're we're, we're on a project it's been three months those things take take times uh, you know there's a lot of uh, work behind the scenes that needs to be done uh, we're providing the, the the firm with a lot of drawings a lot of intel on how we do stuff and then if we can get there uh, that's something that's going to be a big advance for us uh, it's going to help us uh, you know uh, produce more more, more efficiently and, and without any uh, human mistakes. In short, flexible automation has given Citel the capacity to grow. Now, Bergeron admits that uh, the variation in production runs makes it difficult to automate the welding process further downstream, but the company has uh, adapted to this by finding uh, new ways to hire Op uh, operators uh, in the welding department from overseas and that sort of thing. The key is though, that the automation upstream has made the product more consistent, which makes welding easier for that team as well. The key for any company, as we see here, is to automate where you can get the most bang for your buck. And for, for Sorel, that was in blanking and forming. Thank you very much for joining us for this episode of Automation Talk. On behalf of FMA and Salvini America, I look forward to seeing you again soon.